Hello NME readers and viewers, I'm Jeremy Corbyn, leader of the Labour Party on the last leg of the election campaign and I'm very happy to take questions this morning. My name is Callan, um, I'm 20 years old and I'm from Enfield in North London. My question for Jeremy Corbyn would be, with the rise of stabbings that have taken place in the capital this year, how would a Labour government plan to tackle the problem of knife crime? I've just received a question from Callum about the rise of stabbings in London. I live in London, I'm a London MP, and I live and represent a community where we've had tragedy upon tragedy of stabbings and deaths, and I've been to the funerals of the victims on a number of occasions, many occasions. So, we have supported all the counter knife measures such as knife arches in schools and colleges, such as searching shrubberies and flower beds and parks where people have been stashing knives in order to use them. But it's also a question of dealing with the cultural idea that some or other carrying a knife is cool and going to protect you. It's not. But it's also a question about relationships with the police and about the ability of the police to actually deal with the perpetrators of it and make arrests where necessary and prosecute where necessary. But above all, it starts with attitudes and education very, very early on. Listen, there's nothing cool about carrying a knife. You carry a knife, you might die, somebody else might die, and that tragedy will live with their sisters, their brothers, their parents, their aunties, their grandparents for the rest of their lives. Hello there, NME and Mr. Corbyn. Uh, I'm James, 29, from Newcastle. And I'd just like to know, um, why do you think it's the youth of the nation that's getting behind you so much in this general election? The question I've just got from James in Newcastle is about the youth and why they're engaged in this election. I think they're engaged because this document, our manifesto, offers them hope. It offers them hope that their schools will be properly funded, that their youth clubs will be properly funded, that they will get maintenance grants, they will get uh, an opportunity to go to university without incurring massive debts at the end of it. But it's also about investing in our culture industries and our society for the future. So I want our children in schools to learn music as well as all the subjects they learn at the present time. I want them to have the opportunities for the future. That means we have to invest. That means we've got to share the wealth more fairly. That means we don't cut corporation tax. We don't give tax breaks to the very rich. Instead, we invest in the rest. And I'm really excited by the way in which young people have become engaged in this election and around two million have registered to vote who had never voted before and not been registered to vote before. It's the future belongs to the youth. Let's go with it. Hi, my name's Laurie and this is Jen and we're both Foundation Year 2 doctors working in Liverpool. Traditionally at this point in our career we'd be progressing towards specialty training but come August neither Jen or I will be doing so. I'm moving to Australia to work as a doctor and Jen's taken a year out before committing to specialty training. In a cohort of 40 plus foundation doctors that work at our hospital, less than 10 of them are progressing towards specialty training next year and I think this is a reflection of what's happening right across the UK at the moment. I think it's fair to say that it's not been a great year for junior doctors working on the front line of an increasingly stretched health service and this is almost certainly reflected in the morale of doctors but also the whole of the NHS workforce. If Labour were to be elected, how would you address these issues? Lowry and Jen are both what we call junior doctors who just asked me a very good question about what happens to the lack of progress of many doctors into becoming consultants. And uh, she said that of their co they both said of their cohort of doctors, many were now going to go abroad and leave the NHS and also said the morale level was very low. What I'm determined to do is support the junior doctors, they are not the cause of the problem in the NHS, the cause of the problem is the lack of government funding for the NHS. So we will put the money in that's necessary in the NHS and we will treat our doctors properly and not treat them as enemies. I joined the demonstrations of junior doctors. I got criticised by just about everybody for doing that. But when John MacDonald and I went and joined the junior doctors in that march, you know what? We learnt a lot by talking to them and during the height of dispute, I invited a dozen junior doctors who I'd never met before to come to my office and they gave me a seminar for a couple of hours on what their life was like. I want doctors to stay in our NHS, I don't want our students to leave university with debt. Their calling is medicine, their calling is the community. 
Let's invest in them. Hi Jeremy, um, I'm Fleur Penny, I'm 27, I'm a student with the Open University and I know on the Labour Manifesto you've said that you're going to be getting rid of student tuition fees straight away, which is great. Um, I'd like to know what your plans are for mature students like me. I uh, just had a good question from Fleur, yeah. she's, she's a student at the Open University and uh, she wants to know what's going to happen to adult education and opportunities for mature learners. First of all, I say this, the Open University is the most incredible institution we have, one of the best in this country. Founded by Jenny Lee in the 1960s, who was a Labour Minister, the daughter of a minor, who became the first Minister for the Arts. She established the Arts Council and the Open University, which gives everyone a chance. I think it's absolutely fantastic. And I want to properly fund the Open University, as I want to make sure that other adult education colleges are properly funded. I've spent time in Ruskin, and I know a number of others. And so our manifesto includes a clear pledge that we will put funding into it and will also be supporting mature students in doing degrees online, doing degrees by evening classes, doing degrees whilst at work and go back to the principle that you learn from cradle to grave. And we're going to establish a national education service which will oversee the funding of all aspects of our education. Because education is something Yes, you learn a skill for a job. Yes, you learn a skill to achieve better in your career. But it's also about your own development. So if somebody wants to go off and learn a language, I think we should support them to do so, even if it's not necessarily part of their career path. It makes for a better educated society. We all learn from each other. Let's make sure each other can learn from each other. Yeah, hello, Mr Corbyn. I'm Harry Hiscock. I'm 14 from Devon. And uh, my question for you, for you is, what is your favourite band what, what, or singer? What, is your, what, what music do you really enjoy listening to? And uh, yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Harry from Devon asked the really tough question of the day. What's your favourite music? Well, I've got to fess up here. I'm not very musical, but I love music. When I'm at home, late in the evening, doing this on my computer, I have Classic FM on or I have Radio 3 on or I put some music on of other sorts. So I listen to a whole range of things. I do love much classical music. I've got a bit of a soft spot for Mahler, actually. I think this is going to get groans all around the room as I speak now. But I also uh, I like folk music. I like listening to some jazz. I like listening to world music as well. Because essentially music is very interesting history. Think of the history of popular music. Where does it go to? It goes back to the USA, it goes back to Elvis, it goes back to the black music of the southern states. Listen to the music of Latin America, you get Andean pipe music. That's, its origins go way back before the Spanish conquest of, of Latin America in the 15th century. And you see a history of social movements through music, and I love all of that. So I love listening to iconic singers, Joan Armour Trading, Joan Baez, I really admire, and all the popular music that we have in this country. Do I have an all-time favourite song, tune, singer? Well, I do, and it's got to be John Lennon and Imagine. Hi, Jeremy. My name's Gus Simon. I'm 19 years old and from Brighton. My question for you is, the UK immorally sells weapons to other countries, such as Saudi Arabia, who then equip ISIS. The money is in use on things such as the NHS. What will your policies be on this? Gus from Brighton asked a very good question about the sale of arms by Britain to other countries around the world, and he mentioned Saudi Arabia. I am more than concerned about what happens to the arms sales that we put forward and what they're ultimately used for. There's supposed to be a system of end-use certificates. There is meant to be parliamentary oversight of um, arms export licences. And uh, we have made a strong case that we should not be exporting arms to Saudi Arabia that are then used in the Yemen, which has caused such a humanitarian disaster and the lives of many, many people in the Yemen. And so what we've said is that we would suspend those arms sales in order to bring about a peace process in the Yemen because those arms are being used just as much as I have opposed arms sales to Bahrain in the past because of the way they've been used to oppress um, demonstrations there. We've got to think this whole thing through very, very carefully and I'm determined to do that. 
Hi, I'm Rosie, I'm 25 and I'm from Manchester. I am a recently qualified teacher and I am seeing a lot of teachers that are also recently qualified already leaving the profession. How do you intend to address the recruitment and retention crisis within education and teachers in the UK? Rosie from Manchester is a newly qualified teacher. She's only 25 and she obviously has concerns about the future from the way she put a question and said what were we going to do to uh, improve teacher recruitment but also teacher retention. And uh, I have met the teaching unions and many teachers of course and I spoke at the recent National Association of Head Teachers conference on this. A number of things need to happen. One is students should be supported in getting teaching qualifications as well as support in getting the degree that usually precedes the or always precedes the teaching qualification. Secondly, it's the burden that's placed on teachers in schools. We will properly fund education so that the schools won't have to collect from their parents. We will ensure that students leave university debt free. We will continue to support teaching qualification uh, grants uh, as well, but we'll also improve the number of teaching assistants in school, so the pressure on the teacher teaching um, uh, mixed ability classes is reduced, but also make sure that the family of local education is strengthened through a national education service and strong local education authorities and support teachers rather than criticise them. I want to take the burden off teachers, the opportunity should be there. Listen, teaching at its best is the most wonderful job in the world. You see young people developing, you see their attitudes developing, you see their culture developing. But if you're so weighed down by bureaucracy, weighed down by the lack of funding, weighed down by all those pressures, you lose the spirit to, in order to do, it, uh, do your job properly. My mum was a teacher. She loved teaching, but she got fed up with all the pressures that were put on them. And I fully understand that, and I want to change things around so that we keep teachers. There's nothing more ridiculous than a young person going to university, getting a degree, getting a teaching qualification, going into teaching. We've all helped them to get that. Then they get so stressed and so pressurised, they leave the profession and do something else. We all need teachers. Love our teachers. That's a sign-off from me now. Thanks ever so much. I really enjoyed the questions, really enjoyed the discussion. This election is about all the policy things I've talked about in our manifesto, but it's also about us, us as a society and a community. Do we have the confidence to do things for ourselves, do things our way and make sure everybody is counted in society? I don't want to live in a Britain that relies on food banks and tolerates the homeless. I want to give homes to the homeless and people sufficient money they don't have to go through food banks in order just to put food on the table for themselves and their children.